that's like just in terms of the how can I say this? There's a difference between saying, okay, this person is now the CEO and okay. like a cultural change and a confidence change. Like you're asking more about the confidence, it seems, yeah. in your question. Yeah, um, to be in charge. Like, to be okay. in charge, yeah. yeah. Um, I did a lot of debate in high school, so I feel comfortable in some ways leading, speaking, speaking to the guys. To I, I lived in Mexico for a bit, so I can speak pretty good Spanish, so I'm comfortable talking to everyone, relating to everyone. The downside I would say is that Sometimes I have a little bit of imposter syndrome when dealing with people that are older than me that have been in the business for 20 years because I'm a little bit too conscious after being at a school like Columbia of what's the dynamic. Um, yeah, you're good, you're good. Thanks. This is an active set. I <laughs> know. Yeah, I don't know. To, to finish the thought, I guess sometimes I probably am a little too self aware of like not trying to fall into the stereotype of like, oh, the boss's son shows up, thinks he can tell people what to do. But construction's a rough industry, man. You know what I mean? Well, like, at least, but you still have to get the job done. You gotta get the job done, and there's a lot of rough and tough guys, and sometimes the only way to get through to them is to speak to, in a rough and tough that manner. Way, yeah. And uh, that's something I've been struggling with, because it's like, how do you go from, I, my last semester in college, I took like a feminism class at Barnard with 18 <laughs> girls, and like me and one guy. How do you go from that kind of discourse to, to entering this, this difference yeah. it's a totally different space you know what I mean wow what's your uh, like uh, how do you know when to to go off on them like that like how do you know like okay I've said this one time yeah twice, I haven't had to do it often I think initially I was just watching a lot like for the first year pretty much just okay, seeing just when see. things got heated my dad doesn't jump quick for the switch because if you do it too often then it stops being meaningful we, my uncle, he loves to yell, <laughs> and uh, it, people aren't really afraid anymore, and then they're afraid actually to ask him questions they need to ask, and that can hurt production, because then maybe there's an unsafe situation or something, they don't want to call him, because they don't want to get yelled at. Mm. So it's a tricky balance. I would say for me, I've been better now about laying out my expectations ahead of time, so that it's understandable why I'm getting heated, because it was made clear to the person, here's what your responsibility is. You did not meet that responsibility. We need to have a conversation, you know? Wow. And that's where you can be stern because, yeah, you don't want to make people feel blindsided, you know, wow. and be rude at the same time. Wow. So, I don't know. To be honest with you, I gotta be honest with you. You going to Colombia, because unlike before, I used to tell myself, like, why do people waste so much money? But yeah. talking to you now, I think, you justify the money you spend in Colombia. Mm -hmm. So what's Hopefully. the yeah? What's the the admission uh, process like? Getting to Colombia. Yeah. Is it like a merit or you? It's like a you have to pay pretty um, much. Yeah. So I would say these days with any of the elite colleges, especially the Ivies, any like top 20, 30 schools, pretty. Colombia is Ivy like. Ivy yeah, League, yeah, 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 Ivy League. Oh. Um, I would say that the tricky thing about the admissions process these days is that a lot of it comes down to having a very marketable student body mm -hmm. and often what happens what do you mean by that? but by marketable I mean they're searching for diversity in a lot of different senses it could okay. be racial diversity it could also be diversity of interest so interest? like okay. someone who's a top tier billiards player you know okay. something like that they're looking for outlier extremes Ad -ad yeah. and uh, beyond that they also want to make sure their in their endowment grows you okay. know what I mean so then they end up you know, I wouldn't say like paying to get in, but I would say like there's like a lot of they give you contention like around eight. legacy yeah. and things like that. Um, and so yeah, all the elite schools have issues with that. I would say. Wow. So when you talk to other people, right? How do you feel like other people about school like, or yeah, 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 like being a graduate of Columbia, right? Like, does he? Do you do you feel like yeah, I'm one of the because we, when we talk about schools, right? Columbia, I would say probably one of the one percent of yeah. colleges in America or in the world. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that sense? Like when you talk to people, do you, do you, are you aware of that or are you conscious of that? Yeah, I think that the only way. I mean, initially when I started going or when I when I ended up going, I felt really good about it. and I felt proud. But like anything, like getting a new car, or a new job, you or a new house, you, you hedonically adapt and it stops being meaningful. You know. Um, I do think though that like one of the only times I notice it is if somebody asks where you went to school and then it becomes a thing where like I just will say it because it's the fact like I you know do you get respect right away I think it depends on the person like some people respect it other people some don't actually know. Will, other people will default to assuming that you're uppity just for that you know 
but it's not like something you can control yeah, for. But like you just took the opportunity. What if you, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. It's like you being a doctor, right? But you tell people you're a doctor, people still respect you regardless. Whether you, you're a doctor, like, or you went in for money, or you went in for passion, you right. know, whichever way. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think the other thing, too, is that I did an engineering-related um, discipline, and a lot of those programs are pretty much apples to apples, like anywhere you go, go. you know, and I think people don't really appreciate how, that, how true that is. Of course, Columbia's got like their core, and they try to market that it's like a very different liberal arts experience, yeah. but on the engineering side, I would say really the research and the quality of the professors changes, but uh -huh. at the high level professors, some of them are actually worse, because they're so smart that they're like up in the clouds, and they're not really great teachers. They might okay. be really smart, smart. computer yeah, scientists, yeah. but not yeah. necessarily. And you hear that all the time. Yeah. So, I actually spoke to one. Uh, it's not. It's it's like a instructor, like Hajant, but he knows what he's doing. Yeah. And I was asking him, uh, don't you think you're better off than some of these professors? He said, yeah, because what you said exactly proved that. Because some yeah. of the professors they just smart in their own way, exactly. but they don't know how to transfer that knowledge yeah. to other people. And you can't blame them because they get so advanced in niche that being a professor is actually a great job. You get tenured, you get paid, you can be in a city, you know what I mean? It's, it can end up being a very cushy opportunity, so I get why they do it. But it's just bad for students because you're paying like $300 a class and they're standing there and they're not even thinking about the science of education. They're thinking only about the substance of what they're saying. You wow. know? So I don't know. So, question. Are all people, all students in Columbia smart? Um, it varies. I mean, what does it even mean to be smart? <laughs> you know, no, I mean, on the smart. average, like, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, on average, I would say that they're pretty bright. I would say that these days, in my opinion, it's everything's like a pendulum, you know what I mean? We've swung so far in the way of the schools being in the public eye for who they admit and also this question we were just referring to of just diversity for diversity's sake that they use to just fiat that the conversation will improve and I think that that has actually decreased the caliber of what you would call like raw maybe just like IQ type intelligence in these places whether or not it's improved to the conversation in class like that's up for debate I guess one thing I think that they should really consider but that they wouldn't is that they're all non-profit right but they're incentivized to recruit people of means because like we were saying before, it, there's a greater chance of donations later. Mm -hmm. And so even though they're nonprofit, there's still people getting paid. There's still a whole system that undergirds that. And as a result, I feel that it would be much better if we got diversity on the basis of like just socioeconomic diversity. I think that would have much more interesting implications. To give you an example, um, I was in a class, a philosophy class, and yeah, like we had kids from um, someone from Ghana, actually, in mm -hmm. Africa. We had kids that were from like Alaska, Hawaii, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you know, the kid from Ghana was like the daughter of an ambassador. The kid from Hawaii was like, I was about to yeah, say that. the dad's because a commander. The, yeah. it's, you know what I mean? And so, I don't know. Because most of the people from other country that goes to like all those Ivy League schools, they're like, I yeah. like influential people. Like oh, billion yeah, man. Billionaires yeah Southeast Asians that. driving Porsches on the campus. It's crazy, you know? And I just don't think that the way in which those people are brought up is different enough to actually give the result that the schools claim diversity is giving. Do you know what I mean? I just don't think that being rich in see, Hong like, Kong is that different from being do you, rich. Do you in see, like, like, physically, like, how do you get here? Yeah, no, I've definitely had moments like that. Yeah, I would wow. say so. But I think that, like, at the end of the day, if you focus on education for you, yeah. other, you know, there are definitely team environments, collaborative environments, but if you're focusing on your journey, then you don't have to care as much if to pass judgment on somebody else, on you know what people. I mean? You're right, you're right. Yeah, at least, right. it's not easy though, we're all human, we're gonna judge, we're gonna be competitive, especially when you're being pitted against each other on a curve or whatever. Actually, I honestly use that for motivation sometimes. Like, I don't judge people when I compare myself. I use that to motivate myself. I'm like, oh, if you're doing this as 23, yeah. uh, I should be able to do it. Yeah, I know so what you're that, saying. That's I the same way saying. I see it. I completely agree, yeah. yeah. So where do you see uh, yourself in the next five years with the, your dad's uh, company? With the company, yeah. yeah. Well, right now, I'm kind of sussing out what I want my five to seven year plan to be. To be? One of the things that I've thought about doing would be um, rolling up some of our contractors that compete with us or other related companies like we do low voltage electric is the classification. What do you mean you're trying to get them out of? 
No, like buying out other companies okay, okay, or, okay, okay. you know, or, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that roll-up strategy can be an interesting one because we, when my dad was considering selling, we had a few people approach us, both um, former pe- employees at some of our customers and also other private equity firms, like Chris was saying, he works in private equity, that were interested in buying our company as a platform company and building on it. And so I've been trying to back out what their thesis is so that I can better understand why they think that it's a good idea to do that. And if they're expecting synergies or if they're expecting that maybe the customer is looking to work with only three, four contractors instead of having to call 20 people, you know. So I'm, I'm looking into that, and ultimately, it's an interesting position to be in because I could try to make it a lifestyle business and work two, three hours a day if I delegate effectively and automate oh, yeah. the crap out of my role. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm not that kind of guy, and I think that if you are working for yourself for a long time, it just doesn't sound very interesting to me to do that. So I want to build something. I just don't know what yet. Maybe I'll build this company. Maybe I'll go and build another company and just kind of reduce the uh, maintenance on the current Wow. So different, there are different paths. You want my honest opinion? What was that? Yeah, honest opinion. You go you're ahead. You're very smart. Thank yeah, you, man. You're very, very smart, man. Bro, what's your name again? I'm Jack. Jack. Nice meeting you, my brother. Good to meet you. What's your name? I'm TM. TM. Yeah. Cool. It's a nice conversation. Not gonna lie, you're very, very smart, man. You pretty much changed my mind about all those Ivy League school. Like, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm, you know, like I just want to meet somebody and talk to him or her to see if they really have or he or she really has what the school is promising yeah yeah yeah. and not gonna lie you 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 came through and you know you show up you know you really show up man yeah i appreciate the kind words brother nice talking to you my brother yeah good talking to you as well i hope you have a blessed uh, evening and enjoy